Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will be looking at the control of the heart rate and this is from the A-level biology curriculum. So let's begin. So first, looking at the heart being myogenic. So the heart is myogenic and what this basically means is that the heart can beat or it can contract without any nervous stimulation. So this means that the heart does not need anything to be able to uh, beat or be able to contract and it can work on its own. Now even though it can work on its own, nervous stimulation is important to be able to change the heart rate, to be able to alter the heart rate to different situations. So may be able to increase the heart rate or be able to decrease the heart rate. So we will be looking at this later on. All right, so now looking at the parts of the heart which allow it to contract. So first looking at the sinoatrial node, so also called the SAN. So this is located in the right atrium. So if we were to split the heart in the middle, uh, this side would be the left atrium and this is the right atrium. So we have the sinoatrial node located in the right uh, atrium. Uh, and what this does is it basically acts as a pacemaker. So it basically sets the pace for the heart to beat. And this is done by releasing a wave of depolarization, which allows the atria uh, to contract. So it's atria because it's both the right and the left atrium. And then we also have the uh, atrial ventricular node, so VAN. And this is located between uh, the, uh, the atria and the ventricles. So as you can see here, and this is also important. We will come back to that later on. Uh, now we also have bundle of his, and this basically goes down the septum. So this is our septum and the bundle of his goes down here. And finally, the bundle of his uh, would go on to form a uh, perkine fibers so these would be located around here and they will also become important later on okay so now looking at the control of the heart rate itself so what happens first is that we have the sinoatrial node and um, also known as the san so this would send the electrical impulses uh, to the atrium walls uh, so as you can see here we have the san here and what it would do is it would send the electrical impulses to the atrium walls uh, and what this causes is it causes the atria uh, to contract so the atrium walls would uh, contract uh, and essentially the atria is contracting uh, and the volume is decreasing inside the atria and what happens then is the atria ventr uh, ventricular node uh, so the AVN would then transfer the electrical impulses uh, to the bundle of his. So we have the uh, AVN, the atrioventricular node here, and it's going to uh, transfer the electrical impulses that's basically received from the SAN uh, to the bundle of his. So remember, bundle of his is located inside that septum of the heart. And there is, you need to be aware that there is a non-conductive fiber between the atria and the ventricles. So uh, we have the atria here, remember, and we have the ventricles here. And there is a non-conductive fiber between them. So this is what's preventing the electrical impulses from passing straight from the atria to the ventricles. So instead of just the, the electrical impulses passing from the atria to the ventricles, because of this non-conductive fibers, they have to pass uh, down the bundle of his and the bundle of his would then conduct the electrical impulses to the perkine fibers so finally we have the electrical impulses going down the bundle of his and finally they reach the perkine fibers uh, um, around there around around the bottom of the heart uh, and the perkine fibers carry uh, the electrical impulses uh, to the muscles and the ventricles. So the importance of the non-conducting fibers. So uh, as seen before, we have the non-conducting fibers which prevent the electrical impulses from passing to ventricles from the atria. This does is it directs the electrical impulses 
down the bundle of his and perkine fibers. So instead of going from a straight atria to ventricles, it's going down the bundle of his and to the perkine fibers. Now this is important because it creates a delay. So it creates a delay uh, because the the electrical impulses can't pass straight from the atria to the ventricles because they have to tra uh, travel uh, down the bundle of his and the perkine fibers. It creates a delay, and that delay means that the atria uh, can empty. So they they can fully empty, and the ventricles would be able to fill up with blood. So this just means that ventricles would contract base upwards because remember the perkin fibers are at the bottom uh, of this heart there and uh, so this just means that they would the ventricles would contract base upwards instead of contracting from the top uh, so this means that all blood will be ejected now this is important because if you imagine uh, if the ventricles were to contract from halfway points so around here and then only the blood above them uh, would be ejected into the artery, so the aorta and the pulmonary artery. But because the blood is being ejected from the base upwards, so right at the bottom, this is where the blood is being ejected from. Uh, so this just means that all blood will be ejected. And so it just maximizes the amount of blood that, that can be passed on to uh, the, the, the arteries. So the autonomic nervous system. So you need to know that the autonomic nervous system is controlled by the medulla oblongata. So this is located in the brain. So, and this is just a part of the brain. And the the autonomic nervous system is linked to the SAN, so the sinoatrial node. So there are basically uh, two different types of action that this autonomic nervous system can take. So one is uh, by the parasympathetic nervous system. So this basically decreases the heart rate. And on the other hand, as you can imagine, the sympathetic nervous system, which would, uh, on the other hand, increase the heart rate. So the way I use it is I because the sympathetic nervous system begins with an S. So I just remember that this basically stimulates uh, the heart rate. So it just increases uh, the heart rate, really. Uh, so now looking at how pressure changes uh, affect the heart rate. So what happens first is that change the in the, so the change which occurs in the pressure. So this could be due to stress uh, or other factors would be detected by the pressure receptors. So the pressure receptors are located in the iota as well as the carotid artery. And what happens is because of the change detected by the pressure receptors, uh, there will be impulses being sent to the medulla uh, oblongata. So remember, um, medulla oblongata is located in the brain. So in the, the case of high blood pressure, so this could be due to stress. And what happens is there will be more frequent impulses that will be sent to the SAN, so the sinoatrial node, and uh, these will be sent via the medulla oblongata and these are via the parasympathetic nervous system. So remember that uh, parasympathetic decreases the heart rate. So now because we have a high blood pressure, we want to lower the blood pressure. And th this can be done by lowering the blood pressure. So more frequent impulses are being sent to the SAN by the parasympathetic nervous system. And this would basically decrease uh, the frequency of impulses uh, from the SAN node across uh, the atria. So the, the, the frequency of impulses sent to the SAN via the parasympathetic nervous system has increased. But that in turn, because it's sent from the parasympathetic nervous system, this in turn decreases the frequency uh, of impulses that have been sent from uh, the SAN node. Uh, across the atria so this would uh, decrease the heart rate uh, and the blood pressure would fall to normal so remember because the SAN node uh, when it sends an impulse it sends it to um, the um, the atrium walls the atria walls and they this would cause them to contract now because less of these uh, impulses are being sent so there will be less contractions and in turn the blood pressure uh, would decrease because there will be 
the, the heart rate would decrease as well. So now looking at uh, if there was to be a low uh, blood pressure. So again, there would be more frequent impulses uh, that will be sent to the SAN and uh, via the medulla oblongata. But this, in, in, the, in this case, will be via the sympathetic nervous system. So remember, S is stimulating the heart rate. So this, uh, in, in this case, we'll be trying to increase uh, the, the heart rate. Uh, so this will be done by the sympathetic nervous system and this uh, would be the opposite of uh, when we had high blood pressure so the this would increase the frequency uh, of impulses from the san so the sinoatrial node uh, across the uh, the atria so again this would cause there to be more uh, contractions in the atria and there would be more impulses being sent to the AVN so this in turn would increase the heart rate so the blood pressure would start to rise back to normal now so what would happen if there was to be changes in the carbon dioxide levels uh, so this could be due to uh, so the increase in carbon dioxide levels could be due, due, due to um, exercising doing any physical activity uh, and remember, when there would there is a CO two level increase, and the pH decreases because that carbon dioxide uh, can dissolve uh, in our blood, and this would just uh, decrease the pH as it would make um, the blood more acidic. And this would be detected by the chemoreceptors. Again, th these are located in the aorta as well as the uh, carotid artery. Uh, so both in the the arteries in the um, in the heart, and uh, and what the, what would happen then is again the impulses will be sent to the medulla oblongata. Okay, so because of this, um, this increases the impulses uh, that are sent from the sympathetic nervous system uh, to the sinoatrial nodes, so to the SAN by the uh, by the medulla oblongata. And what this would then do is this would increase the frequency of impulses that are being sent uh, to the SAN. So this again in turn would increase the heart rate as there would be uh, more contractions of the atrium, more impulses being sent to the AVN, so more contractions of the ventricle, so in turn increasing uh, the heart rate. Uh, so because of that increased heart rate, there would be greater CO2 loss, uh, and there would be a decreased CO2 concentration in the blood uh, because, because, remember that because of this increased heart rate, there would be more blood being pumped out of the heart, uh, so more CO2 lost, um, decreases the CO2 concentration, and the pH would return to normal. So it's uh, it's returned the the pH back to normal by getting rid of that CO2 so uh, the conditions are not no longer acidic anymore they're back to normal on the other hand if the co2 levels are decreased and uh, the ph increases so the conditions become slightly more alkaline now this time and this again would be detected by the chemoreceptors in the iota and carotid artery uh, and impulses will be sent to the medulla oblongata again so in this in in, in the brain and the impulses, as there will be an increase in impulses from the parasympathetic nervous system. So remember, in this case, and because we have, we want to decrease the and the heart rate, and so this will be via the parasympathetic nervous system. And so the frequency of impulses uh, that are being sent to the a SAN node, so the sinoatrial node, would decrease. And that in turn would decrease the heart rate because again there will be less contractions of the atria, less impulses being sent to the AVN, so less contractions of the ventricle, and therefore the heart rate decreases. So in the, in this case, and uh, the CO2 concentration would increase because the heart rate's decreased. There will be there will be less CO2 lost uh, as less CO2 would be pumped out. Uh, so the CO2 concentration rises in the blood and the pH would return back to normal. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe to see more of these and you can watch my recent videos by clicking on the links popping up. 
Thank you.